Mesdames et Messieurs, euh, euh, je suis très honoré aujourd'hui de présenter euh, le, travail, le travail de Matteo et de Chiara. Je um, so suis Gianni Litti et je suis le team de population genomics et complex traits à Nice, à l'Institut de recherche sur le cancer et l'aging. Et je vais mettre un petit peu de contexte historique du uh, travail de Matteo and uh, um, that he's going to present. So actually this work, uh, it dates back uh, a long time ago, and this is uh, one of the earliest evidence of uh, winemaking in uh, Georgia, which is, to, is thought to be the birthplace of, uh, one of the birthplace of winemaking uh, around 8,000 years ago. And it's one of the early evidence of use of body yeast to ferment and to make wine. And this actually uh, friendship between the microbe and the human it continues today. So today we still enjoy many of the products of uh, the body yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, for the uh, uh, conventional biotechnology of fermented uh, food and beverage. But also there is a new, uh, there are new horizons, and uh, and uh, the body yeast is is now used to to make uh, chemicals, to make drugs, and to make also renewable energy. So the body yeast has not been only exploited to uh, make goods, but actually has been one of the most powerful genetic system um, that has been essentially used to investigate any aspect of science. So this is the latest uh, uh, Nobel Prize that was awarded to Yoshinori Osumi for discovering the autophagy. And again, so what we learn in yeast, in this case, was the autophagy. Then uh, um, um, basically we have translated this finding to, to humans. So my teams exploit the body yeast to understand how the genomes evolve in a population. And uh, thanks to the uh, um, revolution of uh, next generation sequencing, now we are able to, uh, to generate such type of information at the population scale. And, they, and this has application and implication in any field of uh, biology and medicine. And actually, when I started this about uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, when I was uh, in the UK with the Sanger Institute, we were able to sequence about 100 strains of Saccharomyces cerevisiae and its closely related species, and we start to have a sort of uh, understanding, a view of the population uh, structure and history of uh, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this actually is my second time that uh, I came here, and uh, the first time it was when uh, uh, there was a meeting, an anniversary meeting organized by Bernard Dujon, um, to celebrate the 10 years of uh, Gino Leviu, which was a great initiative and uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, <coughs> looking into the evolution of, uh, of yeast genomes. And uh, uh, after the meeting, actually, I was talking to, uh, to Gilles Fisher, and uh, he essentially, uh, with discussion, and convinced me to move to, to France and, uh, and to take uh, uh, part of uh, the science and the population genomics that uh, I was working in England um, uh, with me. So and that's where all, actually the Matteo's work started. So I moved to France and uh, I started to interact with Joseph Chachere from the University of Strasbourg. And what uh, Matteo is presenting is a collaboration with it. And uh, we applied for a grand project de sequenciage to sequence a thousand uh, genomes of Saccharomyces cerevisiae isolated worldwide. And uh, so we, uh, we sort of line up the, the, the um, the, the project line, and we start to assemble a yeast collection. So we wrote lots of emails and letters, start to receive this type of, pack, of packs with the strains to sequence. And then also we uh, interact with uh, Patrick Winker at the Genoscope, and they provide really the state of the art uh, of sequencing facility. And this was really crucial for the success of, of the paper. So then uh, um, this is where I introduced Matteo. So uh, we start with the bioinformatics. So Matteo was recruited and uh, he did the part of the work. It's okay. So thanks. I'll take from here. So at the end, we, we were able to collect uh, over a thousand isolates of cerevisiae that were coming from uh, a wide, um, wide uh, selection of uh, do both domesticated and wild niches and also clinical sample and carrier sample from, from human coming from uh, all the continent except Antarctica. And we also were able to find some uh, uh, strain which were 
present in very old collection that date before the, the use of uh, yeast uh, um, in, at industrial level for winery. So from the sequencing, we obtained uh, around three terabytes of uh, raw reads data, so of sequence, and we perform analysis on population genetics, pan-genome, and genome-wide association study between phenotypes and uh, the, the, the genome. Uh, the, as first thing, we built a um, phylogenetic tree based on the whole genome sequencing, uh, identifying 26 different clades, some of them are no, were known, some other are new, uh, and some subclades inside the biggest clade. Now, in, in the past, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae was thought to be an almost man-made uh, organism, and in the last probably 15, 20 years has been found more and more uh, uh, wild ecological niches for, for it. And uh, we identified some very we identify a number of, of, of wild lineages, among them some uh, very long branches, which means that they accumulate a lot of diversity. And in particular, if we look at these specific lineages here, these are extremely divergent from the rest of the population, and all of them come from the primal rainforest in China and on Far East Asia. And already this uh, highly divergency, uh, together with the high biodiversity of the Saccharomyces genus in that part of the world, suggests an uh, out-of-China origin of the species, which can is something similar to the uh, out-of-human origin of, of our species. To more prove this and uh, add more uh, information about that, we built a, a phylogenetic, uh, a rooted phylogenesis of the Saccharomyces cerevisiae using a subsample of the tree, and we could find that uh, the, 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 all the lineages that are the closest to the common ancestor of uh, uh, cerevisiae and its closest species, Paradoxus, are all the, the um, Asian lineages. But we don't only have wild lineages, we have also a, a high number of uh, uh, domesticated lineages, and these, these clades suggest multiple domestication of the species. Uh, we have a group of, uh, of lineages which cluster around what is uh, the Mediterranean oak, the European wild uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, probably is the origin of most of the uh, domesticated uh, lineages of yeast uh, that are used for wine, for olive oil, for bioethanol, cheese, several uh, beer lineages, bread, um, agave fermentation, cocoa beans. But we also found uh, evidence of other separate domestication in Asia with rice fermentation in sake and palm wine in Africa. Among the domesticated lineages, the, the biggest that we found was the uh, wine European one uh, that contain a third of all the isolate we found. And regardless of the geographical origin of the sample, all the strains that have been used for winery uh, belong to this clade. Uh, since the high number of samples that we had for these specific lineages, we were able also to find sub-lineages, which um, constitute some of them were linked to the human body, both of uh, probiotics or clinical sample. Uh, some were semi-wild specimens, which uh, resemble domesticated, but, but are found on, in countryside, in, in orchards, and probably are feral strain that went out and regained the natural world. And also we have a higher uh, a, a subclade with um, higher diversity, which collect all the strain that are being found in Georgia um, in a specific traditional way to make winery in this terracotta pot. The fact that we have so many dom both domesticated and wild lineages allowed us to uh, identify two different modes of evolution uh, of these lineages. In this plot, what you can see is a pairwise difference between a couple either of wild clades in green and domesticated uh, lineages in red. And uh, there's the sequence diversity on X uh, axis, which means the number of NIP these uh, um, lineages accumulate each other, and on the y-axis is the genome content. So the difference in the terms of genes that they have. So what is clear in is that while 
while the lineages accumulate SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphism, the, uh, the domesticators tend to accumulate more difference in terms of content. This is because uh, l gaining and losing genes is a quicker way to definitely uh, acquire new function or lose the function that are not necessary anymore in the more specific and more stable environment in which the domesticated lineage evolve and develop. So to understand what this genome content uh, difference was about, we used a pangenomic approach, which means considering the whole set of genes that can be found in, some, in, in the world species, separating the genes in the core genome, which means the part of the genome which are shared by all the members of the species, and a variable part which is only present in, in some of them. And for Cerevisia, we found around 5,000 uh, genes that are present uh, always, and around 3,000 that are present only sometimes. Uh, this can seem a very high number, uh, but most of these, so we tried to identify the source of this variable genome. And we found, in fact, that there is uh, two mechanisms for the acquiring of external genome, uh, or external genes which come from out of the species. So two of the two mechanisms that we identified, one is the, um, the introgression. In this case, uh, the genes are usually coming from other Saccharomyces species, particularly from Saccharomyces paradoxus, which is the closest species. In this case, what the genes that are inserted in the Cerevisia genomes replace the ortholog of, the, of Cerevisia. Uh, and we found uh, four clades that are highly enriched of this, all human-related. Uh, and this introgression resembles what happened with, in some human lineages which bear some Neanderthal introgression inside the genome. The second mechanism instead is what we call horizontal genes transfer. This is um, regards genes that are coming from further uh, yeast in terms of phylogeny. Uh, usually these attach a subtelomeric uh, event are not um, replacing the ortholog, which can be very, very far, and usually are coming from yeast species that are very close to the, uh, that lives in the same environment, uh, in fermentation, usually. In fact, these um, horizontal gene transfer are, always, are mostly found in domesticated lineages uh, where these other species, like Turula spora, uh, are uh, food the spoiler. We identified six regions. Three of them were already known, but we found a bigger version of them, and other three that are completely new. Uh, among these, if we take, and for all of them, we identified a reduction process. So if we take, for example, the region C, the region C that has been already described 10 years ago in one, uh, uh, one European strain, uh, it is synthetic and identical to a chromosome of this other yeast, Turulaspora microlipsoides. In our collection, we found several strains which have a larger region, always synthetic to the Torulaspora microlipsoides, but bigger. And one single strain, actually this is a tetraploid, and only on one chromosome we have this very, very big uh, block that are coming exactly from the same uh, region and have one of two same boundaries, but it's much bigger. So we think that then after an ancestral event, this has been reduced to the to adapt to the necessity of the specific lineages spread into the uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae population. Uh, and yes, and it's identical yet to the Torula spora microlipsoides. Uh, we also uh, look at several other features, um, like ploid, ploid and euploid copy number variation, which are all, um, let's say, uh, identification of different level of copy number variation because the ploid means that the whole genome is duplicated, the aneuploid is just part of it, a complete chromosome that is coming in different copies, or single uh, gene copy number variation identifying much higher variation in the part of genome that is unshared. Um, and we also use this information uh, while running uh, GWAS to identify the genetic determinants of phenotypes to, uh, to assess 
the importance of these two different uh, uh, variations, the genome, uh, the copy number variation and the SNPs on the phenotype, finding that the variation in copy number have a much stronger effect compared to the single nucleotide polymorphism. And finally, we, we could uh, trace back all the genomic aspects that we uh, studied and focused on to several different parts of the, the, of, of the phylogeny of the species, identifying uh, lineages that are enriched, for, for example, in the horizontal gene transfer, those lineages which are enriched in progression. Some are more heterozygosity, there's more uh, heterozygosity in some of them. The wild tend to be homozygous and accumulate SNP. Uh, we found a lineage which have a striking chromosomal evolution in which there's a lot of rearrangement and these uh, create uh, um, reproductive barrier to get, uh, in, in respect of the other lineages, and also some uh, specific copy number variation linked to specific uh, clades. For example, in the French diary clade, we found the uh, gene for the D galactose dehydrogenase in triple copy, while in all the rest of the tree is present in only a single copy, and it is a strong adaptation for the. Uh, for the environment. And that's it, so I would like to thank all the members of the team and all the other collaboration uh, that make possible this work, and all, of course, all the people who supplies us with, uh, with isolate permitting to collect the collection. Thank you very much. So this is open to questions now. So are there questions in the room? So maybe I start. So what was your uh, biggest surprise when you analyzed all these trends of uh, yeast? Or were you disappointed by something? <laughs> no, I, I would say that uh, find the two biggest surprises for me were finding uh, such high variation in some lineages. So some of them were already known, but we added even more variation. And usually two lineages of yeast are around 0.5% of diversity. We found up to 1.1, which means that this in introduced a lot of variability, and that could have interesting also forward study because we can try to use this variation for more crossing and study. And also the found that we fact uh, a larger than expected, at least expected by me, uh, of material that are coming from other species. In fact, now we're working also on trying to understand how this kind of events happen, mm -hmm. how this material from different species mm -hmm. enter. Francis André Volman. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned about the evolution of the gene content, both in progression and uh, also result gene transfer. Did you get any evidence for de novo gene pro production in any of these strains? Uh, de novo gene production. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we didn't look directly at that, but there are a number of, uh, of genes. So for, to identify what is uh, horizontal gene transfer or introgression, or what we call, and I didn't know, um, told about here, it's ancestral segregating. We look at the phylogeny of the ORF. So there are some ORF which are, a we have, they have a very weird phylogeny and could be something that is appear only in the Saccharomyces cerevisiae or in some lineage specific and that's possible that those are uh, or the novel gene information but we didn't look into the detail although we're going to. Good question. If I may, yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering whether you actually tried to sequence ancient uh, yeast. Is that possible? And uh, could, could you uh, compare it? Uh, no, in the sense that we didn't try it. I'm not sure if it's possible to find uh, ancient DNA, yeah, good ancient DNA of yeast. Usually, the study of ancient yeast are not from the um, DNA point of view. It's more uh, uh, using mass spectrometry on mm. peptides to identify what, something that has been produced clearly by yeast or traces of, uh, for example, in, in China, I think that one identification of the oldest uh, 
uh, usage was linked to the presence of tartaric acid in some jar that suggests the, some fermentation of specific fruit. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I don't think it's very easy to do that. So you found several strains, several uh, yeast from uh, wine. Yes. So could you make a connection between a good wine and some genes and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. In, 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 a, in, in a broad sense, uh, it's thinkable. Uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of work on, on yeast and wine, and basically the direction is studying which uh, variation are linked to good wine production and which one uh, is linked to bad wine production. Usually, we know a lot about that. Depends on the kind of genes that are related to. Uh, some uh, aromatic compound. Yeah. So there's a lot of research that can be done and it's being done, <laughs> but uh, yeah. D'autres questions? No? Bon, alors on va vous remercier beaucoup. Je vais vous remettre yeah. la médaille de l'Académie.